Okay, so we're going to totally change to cartoons. A little humor. Um, so, Chiefs, you're not quite done. <laughs> so, seeing as you're taking your boards in a couple weeks, um, and for the sake of time, I, I may ask you guys, I'll try to blow through these. So, this is a concept of so congenital anomalies, you, you don't see much in residency typically. You get tested, and it's sort of like cerebral palsy tendon transfers. It's out there, and like, okay, I never see these, so how do they come in? So I've extracted the OIT questions and self-assessment questions for about the last 15 years and what's been tested. And so I could distill this down to two slides, um, but I'll, I'll go through this quickly. Uh, so thumb hypoplasia is the number one question they ask in various forms which is really convenient because it revolves around the CMC joint, which is my adult topic. But, um, and these are in order of frequency. So thumb hypoplasia, thumb polydactyly, camptodactyly, madelungs, radial deficiency, aperts, and macrodactyly. And um, I'm happy to send a PDF for, for you guys, for all of you for OIT, but especially you so you can cram it in and cram it out in a couple weeks. Um, so the embryology, this is kind of fun. You get to talk about babies and how things happen. And uh, things happen actually at the time of conception. And I don't know if anybody has seen the crazy movie Barbarella with Jane Fonda in her, in her wild days. Um, so that's up there for late night studying or something. Um, so uh, quickly, so Hannah, when does the limb bud appear and differentiate? Four to, four to eight weeks, that's exactly right. So the hand paddle, this used to be a movie and I can't get it to play, but the hand paddle first forms and then you have cell differentiation or apoptosis creating the fingers and that lovely turn of the phrase, which I learned in ninth grade but could never remember what it meant, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. So basically all our ancestral throwbacks uh, occur early in development. And so that's the typical uh, manifestation of the limb buds with apoptosis, and apoptosis actually also is the process by which we get separate bones, and the physis is incomplete apoptosis. It starts to differentiate and then it stops, and it keeps on doing that as a rejuvenation until it finally closes. And so the apical ectodermal ridge is the, uh, the specialized tissue at the end of the limb bud, which orchestrates the differentiation of the fingers, there are other genes involved that do the radial versus the ulnar and the dorsal versus the volar. And more recently, things like uh, morphogens, growth factors, uh, retinoids have been implicated primarily as their visibility as toxic agents as opposed to beneficial. Okay, what's the most common congenital anomaly? Derek, you got any idea? And you are correct. Okay, so syndactyly and polydactyly, in my population it's actually polydactyly, but worldwide it seems to be syndactyly, and that's, and perhaps you were calling on maybe the one or two you've seen in residency. Yep, so there you go. And so the incidence is in that order, um, with radial hypoplasia being not all that uncommon. That's actually, I see a lot of it in my uh, pediatric clinic. So how do you classify these? You know, these are, you know, the more you look, the more you learn, and the more they don't fall into anything. This was the international classification that I used when I <clears throat> first started practice, and this is one of my horrible slides from when I first started practice, which means nothing, right? You can't, can't interpret anything of this. So I've gone to the KISS principle. So uh, too few, too many, too little, too big. And they don't ask you where they are in the scheme of classification. It tends to be morphologic or uh, functional. And some just you cannot classify it. This is, this is a bilateral uh, hands in identical twins that I'll show you at the end, multiple procedures, a complex polysyndactyly. It falls into nothing morphologic and probably genetic that we don't have the answers. So in the too few, start with hypoplasia of the various uh, disorders. Oh, the reason you guys figured out why I'm using cartoon characters Yeah, so four, three fingers and a thumb, so only four digits. So hold that thought of why. So, uh, 
most important question you're going to see here. So Dayton, why don't you take this one? Evaluating a kid with hypoplastic thumb. Tell me. Go ahead. What's your question? That is correct. Ding, 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 ding. This is the answer over and over and over again. You're going to see it. So thumb hypoplasia, we do from the kind of the minor to the more extremes with uh, one just being mild and uh, the five is the absent thumb, the four is the floating thumb or the pouce flutant. And this is a little bit like the Keenbox disease. The critical one is whether there is a stable base of thumb or not. And the not stable base of thumb means you're going to amputate it and do a pulsization. Now, in certain parts of the world, particularly in, in Asian countries, they'll do anything to keep the post for cultural reasons, but not on your ABOS exams. Okay, so here's a type 1 where there is mild hypoplasia. You do not have uh, the thenar eminence that is visible here. There's a little bit of the thumb being more like a finger. Here's a 3B, that's the critical one. Even though this child is too skeletally immature to see the carpal bones, you get this whispering of the metacarpal, so you're quite certain that there is no CMC joint. This was actually an in-training uh, picture. And this is the type 4. This is a floppy little thumb that you want to take off early, and then at some point uh, when it's convenient for family and the child is developmentally appropriate, uh, consider pulsization. This was actually a baby that I saw. I was actually giving the congenital hand talk, and one of our residents got called to see a kid in NICU with a floppy thumb. And we said, make sure you look for other things because these are the ones that are highly associated with the syndromic things, particularly voctoral. Turned out this kid had a tracheoesophageal fistula and anal atresia uh, and vertebral anomalies, so the voctoral syndrome. So, so yesterday I showed you a Huber transfer, and this is uh, great for the type uh, 1 or type 2 where you have a mild hypoplasia of the thumb and they're kind of stuck like this. Take the abductor digiti minimi and you tunnel it under the skin. And as I mentioned the, um, yesterday, I attach it to the extensor mechanism on the back. Just a really fun little procedure. And kids are great. You take the cast off and they figure it out. So it's always wonderful to operate on kids because they make you look good. Okay, so that was the uh, answer for that one. And as I mentioned, the multi, the syndromic type things that occur with radial hypoplasia. The other one to watch out for is Fanconi's anemia. Uh, this is an extreme where there is no radius. There's the floppy wrist. There's a kind of super finger condensation of the thumb and index finger. It's a big, long finger, but, but pretty non-functional. Most of these kids use the uh, ulnar digits for prehension and pinch. Um, so when you have a thumb, the procedure of choice, has anybody seen a pulsization before? Yeah, so a few here and there. It's, 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 a, it's a rare thing. It's my favorite thing in all of orthopedics to do because it's everything. It's biomechanics. It's 3D. It's little stuff. It's big stuff. It's pinning. Um, this is a child that I operated on. He was the first one I did. I was eight months pregnant and had, I was a little tax doing it. I'd never seen one before. And um, Anyway, it turned out good that he was, first of all, he was sick, so they were easy structures to see. This is his uh, other hand, which I did some things, centralization, but not a whole lot because this was a functional, but not a, um, this was clearly going to be his dominant hand. So setting him up here, there's his x-rays. And I'll ask medical students, how do you turn a finger into a thumb and keep it at a very high level? Just for sake of time, we won't go through the exercise, but you basically shorten take out the metacarpal, you turn it around, open up the space, and the metacarpal head becomes the trapezium. And so, and that's kind of the cartoon of choice. Here's that kid shortly after surgery doing the quintessential grasp and pinch of the CMC joint uh, function. So, Walt Disney made, you know, back in the day of hand drawings for cartoons, um, there were every, every frame was an individual hand-drawn picture. And so he would do the storyboard, so the big pictures, and then in between, these artists called tweeners, or the in-betweeners would do the, the drawings, the separate drawings, and you have to link them together. And he made it the standard because it was 20% fewer fingers to draw. 
So an homage to Walt Disney, every cartoon character that has kind of a human hand look has three fingers and a thumb. And so who needs, who needs uh, three finger, who needs uh, a full four fingered hand? Um, so here's this kid 10 years later and he's driving. So he's doing those tasks again. And I'll show this to medical students and say, what's wrong with his hand? They usually say like scars or something. It takes him a while to figure out that he doesn't have a um, finger. So this awesome kid finds me 10 years later on LinkedIn. And I asked him if he will reproduce the test that he did when he was 18 and, and 6. And so he's showing you these. So the left hand is the one that we did not policize, did not do too much in the way of fancy stuff. And so that's his left hand, functions very well. And then the right hand, the one that you just saw when he was first driving. I love that little trick, I can't do that. And he went to the next step. I was gonna write his name. You know, it's not totally normal, but works really well. And um, it's a cool procedure. So then he put his GoPro on and shows how he does this. And certainly faster than me because I have no idea how to do any of that stuff. But. <laughs> so LinkedIn digital age, pretty cool. Okay, so failure of differentiation or failure of uh, apoptosis. So syndactylies, the simple and the complex, and then the complex always have bony involvement. This is a more classic simple one. You guys are talking about the jumping, you called it something else, the not the jumping, Dancing girl, okay, so here's the jumping man. So I'm glad that we've updated that. So it's a five uh, flap Z plasty. So with syndactyly releases, you make a dorsal flap. This will work just fine if this flap lives. And this dorsal flap can be kind of any shape and you inset it into the, uh, the web space down here. And the jumping man flap or the uh, dancing girl is, this is the dorsal flap you're going to advance it into C and the side arms go to the side. And it's, you have to do them, once you do them and it kind of makes sense. Otherwise you're like, what's going on there? And same with a lot of flaps. And so that's a really typical uh, syndactyly with skin grafts. I actually use fewer and fewer skin grafts over the years, but that's what you want it to look like. Complex syndactyly, anybody know this cartoon character? This is where the age comes in. My kids are younger than you, but this is from Kim Possible. This is um, Rufus the Naked Mole Rat. Um, <laughs> so the complex syndactyly. So any idea what this hand is? Did I not call him? Carly, have you seen this before? So this is, you know, this you either see them or you don't. And so it's Apert syndrome. And um, we have a craniofacial clinic. That's the only way that I would ever have access to them. So craniofacial anomaly, when you see this really, um, kind of looks like a pig's feet, really. You know, it's a clustered thing. There's uh, ac uh, acrocephalosyndactyly. So there's fusion at the tip. And they have these uh, failure of cranial suture closure. And there's a, a recessive and an autosomal dominant variety, and that one is a fibroblast, fibroblast growth factor, which has been asked on the in-training. So I wish it weren't, because it's kind of stupid to know that, but it is. So that's real typical. If you see fused nails, absolutely, there's fused bones. And here's that, like, this is one of the first ones I did, like, I got no idea what's what. So you just start taking them apart, and here's after multiple surgeries, and they're not beautiful. But uh, the great thing about these kids is they have good thenar eminences, and they function quite well. So that's the answer there. So polydactylies, moving on, uh, we have the preaxial, which is uh, the thumb side, postaxial, the small finger. That's in relation to limb bud development when the limbs rotate. And then centrals. And uh, okay, I'm just going to kind of go through this. This is the most common type. The most common type of duplicated thumb is, anybody want to shout out, Adam? <laughs> it's the type four. Yeah, it's type four. So duplication at the base of the proximal phalanx. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? 
Do you give him a hard time? Okay. Well, why they're shy? They've done their, their deal. You know, I'll pick on you, you know. So, but anyway, so that's the most common, and it, um, you, you know, it's great when you got a radial thumb that's nice and stout, and this one's ready to take off, but sometimes they're much more complex than that. So you do want to retain the ulnarmost digit, by and large. They're, the only exception I know to that is a triphalangeal thumb, but in general, just the one, like the one you just saw, cement this one in your mind. This is a pretty normal looking one and it's on the ulnar side. And then thumb polydactyly, here's a type two, which are much more difficult to uh, treat sometimes because of the nail. That was a dictation error some years ago. I thought it was funny, lawful type two. Um, and moving on to postaxial polydactyly, uh, kind of in the fascinomas, the uh, Amish have this uh, genetic predisposition for postaxial polydactyly with the Ellis von Creveld syndrome. Um, but this is probably the more common that we see. Uh, this is the kind of pousse flutant equivalent of the kind that um, in theory could be tied off. By the way, I'm not a fan of tying off because it always leaves a neurovascular bundle. I like to do a little procedure in the, uh, in the uh, newborn nursery or when they're real small. In African populations, there tends to be a higher incidence of the synostoses uh, variety affecting the metacarpal. So here's back to my kid. Um, many procedures later, it comes up like this, certainly a lot of scars, but, but digging out, this is not your typical uh, polydactyly and hope you never see something like that. So this was just a brief uh, run through. Um, congenital anomalies, kids compensate very well. They make you look good. Procedures tend to improve appearance and function, so that's a bonus of being a hand surgeon for four out of the five chiefs. Um, and the CMC joint is the key to thumb hypoplasia, which will be asked on your exam. So there's my brood uh, before and uh, almost current. That's a couple years ago. And I thank you, and thank you for the wonderful time I've had with you all. <laughs>